Hey guys, so I've got some absolutely massive news today from the Blender Foundation. A feature that I personally have been excited for, for well over a year, is finally available to download from the Blender website. And I'll give you a link in the description below. And we're going to demonstrate it using this scene, which was provided previously by an artist named Eben Schumacher from ebenschumacherart.com. And if you visit his website, you can look at his portfolio. And he's also got some excellent tutorials in his article section. So the new feature is GPU-based denoising in the compositor. So let me just show you why this is so important. So I go into the compositor, and if you're not familiar, basically a denoise node you can use in here to set up your own more advanced multipass denoising networks, which enables you to use far fewer samples and get much faster render times overall. But previously, because this could only execute on the CPU, in some scenarios, it would just be unusable because it was so slow, particularly if you had really fast renders. So what we can do now, I'll just show you how to use it, and I'll, show you, I'll do a comparison as well so you can see the difference. If we go across to the render panel, and we'll just scroll down till we get to the performance section, you can see we've got the options in here for the compositor. So we can choose the device, that the compositor will execute all of the nodes on. And we can also specify which device independently will be used for the denoising node. So for example, if I set this to auto, it will use whatever you've got set here for the main compositor, or we can set it to GPU or CPU, and it will use these regardless of what you've got set here. So I'll just do a quick test with this scene, and this is a 4K scene. So denoising will on CPU will generally take quite a long time. And we'll go in here. I'm using Turbo Tools to build a network for me. So again, this will just make sure that the render time is reduced as much as possible because we'll be able to use far fewer samples thanks to the advanced denoising network. And this will actually tailor the denoising network to your current scene. So you'll get the best possible render time and the best possible quality. So I'm going to choose the high denoising mode. I've got the sample preset set to user, which basically means it's going to use whatever sample settings I've got set in Blender's sample area. So it's actually just going to use 12 samples, and it's going to have, use a noise threshold of 0.5. So it's going to render, it's going to do the sampling really quickly, but then we're going to see how long it takes to denoise. So let's do a render. I'll just make sure I've got it set to CPU. So render. Turbo Tools render still image. Again, you don't need to be using Turbo Tools to take advantage of this feature. I'm just using it because it automates the building of those advanced denoise networks for me. So you can see it's finished sampling in six and a half seconds, just over. And now it's doing the denoising. And it took an additional 12 seconds to do the denoising, which is probably acceptable for a still image. But if you're doing an animation, obviously, those extra 12 seconds per frame will add up quite substantially uh, in over a few thousand frames. So let's now do it with the GPU mode. So go into GPU mode, and we'll do a render again. So Turbo Tools render the image. The sampling time should be about the same, so around about six seconds. And now the denoising time is two seconds. So we've basically more than halved the render time overall. And it's worth pointing out as well that I'm actually using a really powerful 20 core, uh, 28 thread running at 6 giga gigahertz CPU. So if you're on a quad core, for example, then you could expect the denoising time on the CPU to have been three or four times longer, in which case this new feature would be reducing your denoising time from nearly a minute down to two seconds. So let's demonstrate this with an animation. And just to make it faster for demonstration purposes, I'll reduce the resolution to a quarter and then specify a file to output to. Uh, render, Turbo Tools render animation. And if we go into the output panel and we'll just click on the little folder, we'll Alt click on this to open up the file location in Windows. And I'll start playing this back. You can see we've got the animation uh, rendered out. We've got a huge amount of flicker, of course, because we're only using 12 samples. Uh, to get rid of this flicker, you would normally need to render at least, generally, around about 40 times longer. So you'd need to use much higher samples. But if you've got turbo tools, we've actually got a feature in here 
where we can publish the animation and that basically means it will output the animation again without needing to re-render but we can also choose to either change the composition or we've got this little tick box here remove temporal flicker which will sort of remove that flicker from the uh, newly created published animation so let's do that we'll just name this flicker removed we'll click publish making sure this is turned on and I'll use temporal intelligence as well this will make sure that if we've got sort of complex movement like things like fingers and things moving around or mechanical objects it will make sure we don't get any artifacts so I'll turn this on I'll leave these as the default settings I've got full tutorials on how to use this um, all we need to do is click on publish animation and we'll see we're going to get updates in the viewport over here and it's finished already so it's done 100 frames in less than a couple of seconds and if we look at the result now you can see that flicker has been dramatically reduced we could probably have done with a few more samples to give it a bit more of a fighting chance but if we look at these side by side you can see the flicker removal is quite substantial unless of course youtube actually removes it which it sometimes does uh, but just take my word for it if if i was epileptic i would be horizontally gyrating across the floor right now uh, a massive thanks to the developers that have been involved in this so we've got a, a few developers actually over the it's been over a year in the making uh we've got stefan werner from intel he originally started coding it uh, sergenko from intel also was involved and then alaska and also sergey from the blender foundation and then finally omar has taken this over who's also from the blender foundation and he sort of added a lot of new features to it regarding how it chooses the best device for the denoising. And he's also obviously added under this section here, he's made it possible that we can use a different device to the compositor, which is important because sometimes you want your compositor to be executing on the CPU, but still want to be getting the fastest possible denoising. And these are options that Omar uh, has added. So massive thanks to those guys. If you want to download it, so it's not in the normal download section yet. Normally you'd go into the experimental build and download it from here, but it's not yet in there. I think it will be in there quite soon. It's just under review at the moment. But if you want to try it, you can go to this link here. Again, in the it's in the description, and just download whichever version is you know for your for your operating system, so Windows, Mac, or Linux, and then you just download it unzip it and then because it's the portable version you can run it directly from the unzipped file you don't need to install it so it won't mess with any of your current blender installations so thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed the video uh, make sure you subscribe and i'll catch you in the next one